Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Broken Roads with me, Bring It Dawn. Let's see what Jasper needs. Yes? So much to kill, so little time. I'm here on Angela's behalf to help you with anything you may need. The lapis dealted and unpracticed. Oh, Governor Smith, you vile being. She steeples her fingers. Numbat, an indentured servant of mine, is currently reporting less than stellar performance results in her latest job near the train carts. I wish to amend this, but I don't have the time to go around in circles with her. So, I want you to motivate her by relaying this message. The principle is simple, but errors have a tendency to compound. Isn't that interesting? Now run along, little messenger bird, and come back here when you're done. I had a feeling it'd be tied to that woman. Because she wouldn't talk to us unless we knew her name. And the best place to get her name would be the woman that oversees the indentured servant program. I think there are only two indentured servants we could speak to anyway. Numbat here and Rich Craggy. She's still staring at her tools. She startles when you speak. Are you a numbat? She smiles, but it doesn't reach her eyes. Oh good. By Jasper's rules, I'm allowed to talk to you. Yes, I'm Maya Kimmins, also known as the numbat. Like an accountant, but some clever bugger came up with the nickname for the role. Something about numbers and wombats, I'm guessing. Thinking about it makes my brain hurt. Anyway, I work, well, worked, at the bank. Me and my family, we've been indentured servants in Meriden all my life. I was raised for the bank job, and I thought I'd keep doing it when I earned my freedom. I guess that was just wishful thinking after all. She sounds incredulous, but she can't believe the words leaving her own mouth. What are you doing here? She barks out a bitter laugh. I don't know. Digging a hole? Moving coal? They didn't deign to tell me. I have no right to ask. My parents taught me to handle the books. And all my life I've helped keep track of everything. Everything. It goes in and out of the bank. I catch cheaters. I stop fraud. I make sure all our businesses keep working. But now I guess I'm shoveling crap. She rubs at her injured hand. You've been a servant all your life. Uh-huh. My parents were criminals. My parents were caught. My parents were indentured to pay back their debt to society. Better than being exiled. Maybe. All I know is I never had a choice. I was born into it. My parents at least taught me to do sums, and they promised I'd be able to work my way to freedom. If only they could see me now. He laughs bitterly. They genuinely believed this system was fair. How much longer until you earn your freedom? I reckon I only had a couple of years left, but I overheard Miss Smith and Miss Menzies talking. She grinds her teeth until her jaw cracks. They said it'd be inconvenient for them to lose their workforce. And just as I get close to paying off my parents' debt, suddenly I'm here doing work I'm not suited for. Miss Menzies has already said that my work ethic has stooped drastically. Her shoulders likewise drop. I try to give her a piece of my mind, and I'm barred from talking to her. Yeah, this is one of the major problems with indentured servitude. I've kept a ledger, you know. She speaks urgently, but quietly. All my salary and expenses. I bet it'll be gone by the time I get back into the vault. If I ever do. She blinks away fresh tears. You said you worked at the bank. I don't know what I'm doing now. The governor's driver, Ash, he came in and told me that I had to leave. I barely had time to get my sleeping bag from the vault before he hustled me out. And then they made me put my bag in a shack. They gave me tools, and I don't do physical labor. She rubs at the fresh calluses on her palms. At least, as long as I kept that job, I didn't. When the governor's driver kicked you out of the bank, did he say why? A sly smile creeps onto her lips. He ordered me not to say anything. But maybe I can offer some... Unrelated advice. She smirks. Remember, I'm not allowed to say anything. I'm a good servant. She looks at you suddenly, a mischievous glint in her eyes. 
Do you like Lamingtons? I like Lamingtons. Everyone likes Lamingtons. Uh, yeah. I love them. Right? She grins at you. I'm feeling a little peckish just talking about them. But I'm not allowed to leave my post until sunset. Shame, really. Lamington sure would be a nice treat right around now. She raises her eyebrows at you. Holly at the gala sells them. Or the merchants in the marketplace probably have something if you or anyone you know might be hungry. Just in case you want to go for a quick walk. Jasper Menzies wanted me to bring you an interesting message. The principle is simple, but errors have a tendency to compound. She stares at you for several seconds. Miss Menzies can't even make the time to threaten me to my face. I'd quit if I was allowed. If it wasn't punishable by, you know, death. Well, thanks for telling me, I guess. I work so much harder now. For some reason. No bad squints, he gives possibly the fakest smile you've ever seen. Well, what did Jasper's message mean? Yeah, I think it's just a way of saying the more she messes up, the longer her sentence is. Oh, just that she's threatening to comply compound interest rather than simple interest to my indentured servant debt if I don't magically get better at manual labor. Great. So if it wasn't all some big farce already. Well, that's all. Bye. Uh, let's report to Jasper, and then I guess we can do the Lamington thing. Unless, by saying that message, I failed the other quest. You sell Lamingtons. He scoffs. If I sell Lamingtons, the root pellets roll downhill. Uh, better than Holly's mate. He wraps them up in a mostly clean rag and hands the package to you. He clicks his fingers. That's probably the something else I forgot. Those buggers. He gives you a gap tooth grin. Solved. Let's go to the gala real quick. Let's see if she has any dialogue about the Lamingtons. I think we burned that bridge when we bought them from, uh, I already forgot his name. Wilkins. I was thinking Hudson, but that's the guy standing beside him. Not bad size. Let me guess. We're gonna talk about the bank some more. Actually, I'd to hear? I'd like to hear more about what it's like being a servant in Meriden. Misery tourist, huh? Fire away. Alright. I got some freshly baked Lamingtons for you. Her eyes light up as she grabs a cake from you, greedily stuffing it into her mouth. Okay, so at the bank there's a Grisham... She stops, swallows her food, and wipes her mouth. Bit on the dry side, those ones. Got them from, got them from Wilkins, didn't you? She leaves a sponge out all day to air. Grabs her stomach as if in pain. Man's an idiot. We did ask, but you did what I asked, so. There's a grill on the bank wall at about knee height. It's right near my bed. I used to listen to people out in the street at night. Best entertainment I could get, without going into debt drinking myself stupid at the gala or whatever. So, if I could hear out, I'm sure you could hear in. I haven't had a chance to check because of Jasper's stupid progress reports, and I don't honestly want to think about it too much. But I reckon if you put your ear up to it, you might just get some insider info on what they're keeping locked up. Guard duty gets awful boring, and the bunch here love to run their chops. How would a curious visitor speak through the grill with those guards around? Those guards, Numbat rolls her eyes. They're really not the brightest crayons in the box. 
I'm sure you can figure out some way to distract him. He sizes you up for a moment and takes a breath. But if they give you any flack, just remind them about Clause 42. And no, please don't ask me about Clause 42. <laughs> What's Clause 42? Oh no, stop. Don't ask me that. She spoils her deadpan delivery by covering her mouth to stop laughing. Stop from laughing. Then she turns serious. Look, us indentured servants, us deados, have a special little something written in our, into our contract. No one but contract owners are supposed to know about it. I've seen a lot of different documents come through during my work at the bank. I can't tell you the intricacies of the legalese. But suffice it to say, those who know about Clause 42 can invoke it, so that any work an indentured servant's done towards their freedom will be lost. She looks scared for a moment. Look, I'm trusting you with some pretty high-level crap here. Just name drop the clause quickly with the guards, and they should be amenable to bending the rules. A little. Don't tell them how you know about it. So the guards are indentured servants then? That seems a bit odd. Why would you equip the people you're making angry? I mean, they don't have weapons, do they? But still, if they're the security force, you don't want them to be the ones mad at you. That's why I didn't mean to click on you. It's also possible that whatever's in the bank is what we found that key for back at the plane. Alright. Nabat wasn't happy about your message. She clicks her tongue, unimpressed. Nabat should be grateful I spoke to her before I laid out proper punishment. But no matter. My precious time has been recovered. Do thank Governor Smith for tasking you with checking in on me. I'm not going to rat her out. I'm on Numbat's side. Because I don't agree with indentured servitude. Especially when it's being abused like that. Alright, next stop. The bank. So there's the grill. I guess we'll talk to the guards first. Back again, huh? What do you need now? If the bank's closed, why are you still here? The guard looks pleased with himself. Governor's orders. We're handpicked to watch the place. Scare off any vermin that creep up. He eyes you carefully. You're not vermin, are you? I don't have to scare you off. <laughs> Would Vermin be able to pull a coin out from behind your ear? She holds out a hand to keep the first guard from stepping forwards. She sounds wary beyond measure. It's a trick, Jace. Don't let him touch you. What? With the lure of magic? He looks at you like you just kicked a puppy. This is just like that time the governor's personal drive... Uh, Jace? Quickly cuts him off. We have specific orders. Especially if this slot had been sent by you-know-who. Make sure we're keeping our mouths shut. Realization dawns and he quickly shifts his demeanor. I get it, Don. The guard winks at you. Not only do I not know why the bank's closed, I know nothing else at all about the bank. He smiles, warming to the task at hand. In fact, I don't even know what a bank is. Too far. Dial it back. She turns to you. He's not an idiot, I swear. He tell whoever sent you that we're doing our jobs, though. Huh. You mentioned the governor's personal driver. Any idea where we can find him? Well, you didn't hear it from me, of course. But if there was a driver, he's probably getting smashed at the pub, having a pint and bending Holly's ear. Or her rear. Jace, don't be gross. I'll tell your mom. He looks at her aghast. You wouldn't. Uh, want some water? It's hard work being out here in the hot sun. You're a saint. No two ways about it. He grabs a drink from you and chugs it. Lovely. He passes the bottle to his companion. 
She scalds the rest of the water. It carefully puts the lid back on the bottle. Maybe these guys are okay. Much nicer than that numbat jerk anyway. Her eyes suddenly go wide. Uh, forget I said that. Please. She wouldn't give us the time of day, let alone something to drink. Don't know how she thinks she's uh, better than us, considering she's a filthy Dedo too. Uh, what's a Dedo? They really don't teach you anything out in the boonies, huh? She looks at her partner. A Dedo is a debtor. You know, someone who's who owes the town money for breaking the law. Or making Angela angry. My brother put a skink down the back of her dress one time, and she... Mostly it's for crimes. But yeah, sometimes it's a 27-year-old man making poor life decisions. She shrugs. Comes with the territory. You want law and order, you gotta be willing to take the slap that's owed to you. Yeah, that's owed you. What crime did you commit? I dressed up a mannequin in Angela's clothes and hung it in the center of town. She shrugs again. They're not so big on free speech here. Or criticism. It was this or exile. My brother challenged me to an eating contest, and we couldn't pay the bill. Turns out Holly's pretty good at keeping track of how much you order. I lost count after the seventh steak. Isn't there some way I can free you? She shakes her head. First there's the fine, then there's... There are the administrative fees. Uh, then there's the public nuisance task. And, sorry, tax. And your accrue interest. Daily. Jasper really knows how to kick them where they're down. When they're down. Gosh, I can't. Start to fall apart. Can't read anymore. Uh, how long until you pay off your debt? She sighs. I don't even know how much I owe. The original finds a secret. So that so is the interest rate. And my daily wages. Either Jasper or Angela's got it written down somewhere. But at this point, I'm free when they say I'm free. Yeah, they are abusing every aspect of the Answered Servant program. It sounds barbaric. My brother got out. Of course, it's because he ran away. If he shows up in Meriden again, he'll be shot. But he's free now, so... She looks at him with unexpected tenderness. Yeah, that's right. He's free. Oh, I wonder if he was actually killed and didn't actually run away. Shot is Brett what? Okay. I don't want to hear anymore. We live it, and it's pretty boring, so I don't blame you. I'll be going now. Alright, uh, I want to stand near a specific part of the wall for a sec. Can you guys turn away or something? You catch the guard by surprise. Why would you... He takes a calming breath. Look, I'll tell you what my school teacher would always tell me. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. Jason Thomas, you put that away immediately. He puts your hand over her mouth, or his mouth, until he stops talking. Look, we all want things. Money, freedom, a job where I'd never have to stand near this doofus again. He pushes her hand away. Hey, it looks like he might cry. I thought we were friends. She ignores him. The point is, no one gets what they want or what they deserve. And if you're some rando asking to stand near a very specific part of a building we're guarding, you get neither. Now rack off. Let me stand by the darn grill for five minutes. I'll get Jasper to invoke Clause 42. Both guards stiffen. He narrows his eyes. I don't know how you know about that. I don't want to know how you know about that. But I do hope you know that that's an ugly phrase around here. You don't want to say it to the wrong people. Jason, maybe we should get Angela involved. This is above our pay grade. You go. She likes you more. No way. I don't want to have to explain to the governor how an outsider came up with this very sensitive info. Angela's, uh, great. And I do like the lollies she sneaks into my pocket. But she's not the most forgiving person. She sighs. He's not the most predictable either. She turns to you. Look, are you really sure you want to do this? We're not the only ones she's got watching the bank. She shoots a gl glance at her companion. And Angela tends to take a rather permanent approach to any problems that get in her way. Don't worry, I can handle Angela. Now, hand me and the grill have some privacy. Fine, stand wherever, but make it quick, will you? They suddenly become very interested in a spot on the cracked bitumen 
out in the front of the bank. Now they're able to get close to the grill. You can hear someone humming quietly inside. Keep listening. The song continues, changing in volume as if the person making the noise were pacing back and forth. It's a jaunty, catchy tune. After a moment, you realize it's a swing version of Waltzing Matilda. Hello? Scott Measure. You hear a shuffling, and then a voice, high and reedy, calls out. Hello? Yes, hello, I'm here. Would you like to stay and talk for a bit? Please. Who are you? Measure. First name's Scott. The man who put me here said it was for safekeeping. But I don't know why. Why am I a secret? Because I'm alive? Measure. What kind of name is that? He pauses, as if he doesn't understand the context of the question. It's my name and my title. It's what I do. I measure things. I'm a research scientist. He pauses. Don't you name people for their jobs? Then maybe you do things differently here. I've been told other communities are less planned than Kalgorli was. Why would you being alive be a secret? I don't know. I remember them pulling me out of the plane, stuffing me into the boot of a car, and covering me with a blanket. I passed out and woke up here. And some woman came in and asked me questions about where I came from, how the plane flew. I answered all her questions. I thought she'd let me go then, but that's looking less and less likely. The way she was talking, I assume she thinks Calgorly is a threat to this place she runs. Meriden, I'm guessing. Are you a prisoner? I'm in a room with a metal walls, a cot, a thick door with guards outside, and I'm talking to someone through a grill on the wall. This is a strange way to treat guests, so I'd assume... yes? You said you're a research scientist. What does that involve? I come up with hypotheses, run experiments, and draw conclusions from them. And I see how that helps us understand our world, and discern the next measurement that needs to be taken. My field is, well I guess you'd say engineering. I specialize in mechanics, and the effects of, well, I probably need to draw several diagrams to explain it. Not really an option right now. Now try me. Nice. Alright. His explanation is concise yet detailed. It actually would have been easier to understand with the diagrams, but you make do. Sadly, all my gear is destroyed in the crash, or stolen. I don't know which. If I still had my... gadding ball, I wouldn't even be having this conversation. The timbre of his voice changes. You know what happened to the others? Are they alright? A gang called the Mongrels killed them. Did they now? His voice is a low-pitched whisper that raises the hairs on the back of your neck. I saw this weird metal sphere in Angela's collection. Could that be your gadding ball? Angela, the governor. The one who questioned me. That would shed some light on some of her questions, if so. The gadding ball is, well, the closest thing you might be familiar with is a welding machine. But it's suited to a wide array of uses. You help me get it back, I can show you how it works. You help me get back to Kalgorli, I'll even let you keep it. What do you say? Ah, uh, sure. Thank you. At least we know it's secure in the governor's office, not being messed around with by some kids or wannabe me uh, mechanist. I'm trying to say ma machinist there, but that's not how you pronounce that. It was funny because it's pronounced machinations, but then mechanist. Oh, the English language. Uh, you don't want to make yourself a target right now, though. Everyone's too on edge. Even stuck in here, I keep hearing about the election debate. What a ridiculous concept. Come back to me after everyone's gone to bed, and we'll work out a plan. Your home sounds interesting. I'd love to hear more. My pleasure. What would you like to know? How is it that your town even has aeroplanes? Well, it was one aeroplane, singular, and we no longer have it, to be fair. The plane was my biggest experiment to date. Researching the old world and harnessing the power of the new, that's what my work consists of. And now it's smashed to bits, 
and I'm stuck here. He takes a breath. Oh well. At least I got all the way here without getting caught by mutants. You know, the bartender in town mentioned mutants too. Of course he did. Are you saying you've never heard of them before? He falls quiet. Education outside our walls really has fallen even further than we thought. What can you tell me about your town's leaders? Our leaders were born and bred to wield the power they have, with wisdom, insight, and most importantly justice. They've seen our world, and they have a plan. They're leading us all to a better future. I'd like to talk more about you again. I don't know how that could possibly be an interesting line of inquiry, but okay. Alright, I've heard enough. Bye. Suit yourself. I'm guessing he'll be a companion at some point. Especially if he needs help getting to Kalgori. Uh-oh. Kalgorli. The bag is removed from your head. You see a moderately handsome, more than moderately tough, and a no moderately about it armed woman standing before you. She stares at you for several seconds before she speaks. Now is a good time to maybe start asking yourself some questions, such as, am I in the mood to be quiet and listen up? Then again, you could ask yourselves, do I feel like being eviscerated by a pack of mongrels? He speaks out the cor- he speaks out of the corner of his mouth. I have a feeling this questions might be rhetorical. She's not bullcrapping us, she mutters. She watches Pris for a few moments. She's capable and very willing to hurt us. She glances at her sister. She's mad. Do you want to shoot her or screw her? We'll see. Enough whispering. You lot, come here. As you walk towards the crew's leader, Notice a lot of movement in the shadows. Figures drawing closer to, but staying just out of the light. A peck, like she said. Name's Pris. Some folks call me the Empress, but I don't really go for titles. She looks comfortable. Even relaxed. But you also get the impression she is weighing you and your companions very carefully. So tell me, who are you? I would go with option two. We're a small part of what's left of Brookton, Your Highness. We're hoping to find help in Meriden. Now we're here. I heard about Brookton. My crew just brought some scrap back from there yesterday. She pauses. Sounds like it used to be a nice place. Might even be nicer. Now it's filled with corpses. Don't you dare. She hisses the words with a force you've never heard from her before. Maybe you bothered to dig graves for him. It might have deterred the... Might have deterred the dingoes, but my people are persistent, and not too picky when it comes to free meals. Yeah, she's trying to get a rise out of us. Stay silent. Before you can blink, Ella lunges at her in a wild swing that almost hits its mark. Then Pris drives an elbow to Ella's ribs, and the scout falls to the floor. She walks over and pats you on the cheek. Good boy. Hey, no. You lot reckon you're safe, now that you're in Meriden. She laughs. This place is a web of lies and bullcrap. Me and my pack make use of what falls out. Or gets thrown out. Angela, meanwhile, is very much a spider in this metaphor. You made her angry. She asked me to teach you a lesson. She wants to put the fear of me into you. So what do you say? Are you sufficiently afraid? Yeah, that's a lie. Terrified. Oh, I'm pretending I'm saying it sarcastically. Like, yeah, I'm terrified. She smiles. See, the best part about this gig is that it doesn't matter if you're having a go at me or generally uh, peeing yourself. You mess up again. My face will be the last thing you see. So please, screw it up. I could use a chance to really let loose. She shares an amused glance with their hidden lackeys. Get them out of my sight. Alright, we learned a fair bit. Also, we had our companions there with us. 
or several companions. The warmth she showed you earlier has completely evaporated. She leans in, under the guise of brushing some lint from your shoulder, and pitches her voice low. I hope your chat with a certain empress has clarified what it means to defy me. But so we're both crystal clear on my expectations moving forward, know this. I've allowed you into my town, and as a result, I expect you and your friends to be loyal to me. Not Meriden. Me. She steps back and resumes speaking at a normal volume. I also expect you to do as I ask. I have an election to win. Anyone who endangers that endeavor has no place here. Now, I strongly suggest you stop looking into my business. If you don't, you and your married band will face far worse consequences. Good day. Alright, let's step out. I can turn in this quest. I'm not sure if turning in this quest will cancel out the other one for Hogan. I shouldn't have stepped outside. It might start another conversation. Hey, it didn't. So. Yeah, I think we'll still go talk to the driver. That should not complete that quest. I think I'll talk to Hogan first anyway. Because I would like to do his quest instead. Because Angela is obviously a villain. Hogan may not be much better. But if he's not in cahoots with the mongrels, then that's already a step above. Plus, he's not responsible for this person being held prisoner. Who is completely innocent based on what he told us, so. Angela's burning... Well, she's already burned our bridge, but I still want the experience and the money. But I'm not sure how the election pans out if you do both quests. But that's okay, we'll figure it out. Either way for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.